Welcome to another session with Trial Joint explaining the concepts of clinical trials. In this, we'll be explaining the importance of feasibility questionnaires and site selection visits. So the importance of feasibility questionnaires and site selection visits are a sponsor's way of determining if your site's suited for their study. So whether you're a coordinator, a CRA, or a physician looking to become a principal investigator, or already a principal investigator, it's important to know the importance of a feasibility analysis slash survey and a site selection visit. So in this piece, we'll be explaining a little bit more about the importance. So when you're looking at a study, you have to see if your site will be able to conduct the study. As well as a sponsor, they'll be looking at your site to see if you'll be able to conduct the study and they won't waste their resources giving you the study. So before they do provide you with a feasibility analysis questionnaire, they'll send you a CDA, which is a confidential disclosure agreement, or also can be called an NDA non-disclosure agreement, which basically says you won't share the information anywhere else. So after they send you this and it's been signed and executed, they'll send you a protocol synopsis, which will cover what the study is going to do, what they're going to study, what kind of patients they're looking for, and they'll look at a feasibility questionnaire for you. And typically this is about eight to 10 pages long. So in the next few slides, we'll go over the most common questions in a feasibility questionnaire. First is how many patients can your site enroll for this particular study? So if it's a type two diabetes study with certain criteria, how many of those type of patients will you be able to screen and find and enroll into the study? How many patients can your principal investigators see on a monthly basis, weekly basis, so that way they can determine if there's enough capacity for them. And then how many subjects can your site screen on a monthly basis, not enroll, but screen. And how many subjects can your site randomize as well per month if it came down to, if it came down to it. And then further information by your principal investigators, this is where they'll ask for a CV explaining where the PI graduated from, what kind of practice they have, what experience they have, and if they've done any past studies and what kind of studies they've done. Uh, then they'll ask you information about your staff to figure out who your site coordinators are, what your recruitment team is like, and other aspects of your research site that can highlight and make you different. And they'll want to know, you know how many years of experience your main study coordinator has because they know the importance of a study coordinator in a study and they'll look to see how many study coordinators you have at your research site. They'll also look how many clinical trials are given to just one coordinator to make sure that they're not past capacity. Um, and they'll look to see if you have patient, if you can reach out to patients 24 seven, or at least you have a call service that will talk to patients and forward them to the right area. Mainly this is for any adverse events. And then they'll see if you have staff during holidays, just again for that same reason, adverse event monitoring. And then they'll look to see if you've worked with this particular sponsor CRO in the past, what the specialties of your PI, principal investigator, and your site are, and what sources you would use to recruit additional patients beyond your just database. And then what type of advertisements you use and how well have they worked for you on what kind of studies. And then how many clinical trials have you conducted in the past in the same therapeutic area? This is to assess if you have experience in doing all the procedures necessary for this type of study. <clears throat> and then they'll look at how many clinical trials you've conducted in the last five years. This may be bucketed up into the entire questionnaire. They'll see how many trials you have currently ongoing. And then they'll see how many competing ongoing studies so if you're they're looking to enroll you for a type 2 diabetes trial they'll look to see if you have any other type 2 diabetes trial going on and see if you know patients will be cannibalized into other studies so that's one thing that they're always looking to prevent they'll look to see if you have a secure subjects record storage system and if you have a double locked drug room for the investigational medication um, if you have a EMR system or if you use paper-based systems or you have a CTMS system they'll also look to see if you use an EDS EDC platform, sorry, and which ones you've used in the past, and do you have a CLIA certificate, which will show that you're using the good clinical practices, this GCP, and has your site ever been inspected by the FDA, or have you ever received a warning letter from the FDA? <clears throat> These answers will help the sponsor and or 
the CRO determine if you're a good fit for the study. One thing that we typically suggest is you underquote and underestimate how many patients you'll be able to enroll. So that way you're not overburdening yourself and setting high expectations and low performing when it actually comes down to study. Because we all know how difficult it can be to locate the right patients for the right study. So don't exaggerate the answers at all. So now onto the site selection visits. This is after the feasibility analysis. The sponsor of CRO determines if your site's a good fit. And so this is where a CRO will come visit your site to just check out everything, how it seems, how it looks, if you guys are following GCP, and other nuances of clinical trial etiquette and procedures. They'll also correlate the answers you gave on the feasibility analysis to see if they line up when they do the site selection visits. And then once you've reached the site selection visit point, you know, you're you're pretty much there on winning the study. As long as everything checks out according to your feasibility analysis, it all matches up, they'll be very eager to work with you. And so this does conclude our <coughs> session on importance of feasibility questionnaires and site selection visits. Hopefully this was uh, providing any insight that you guys needed. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us.